Shortly after the Geiger and Marsden experiments done between the years of 1908 and 1913, Ernest Rutherford proposed his new theoretical model of the atom, which challenged J.J. Thompson's plum pudding model, which was the prevailing theory at the time. Rutherford's model proposed that at the center of an atom was a positively charged nucleus, which attracted much smaller, negatively charged electrons that would orbit it. This model solved a huge problem that the plum pudding model could not, which was that it couldn't explain the extreme deflections of ionizing radiation with air molecules. Rutherford's model also had a much more intuitive reasoning for the atomic weights of atoms, stating that the majority of the mass in an atom was composed of the nucleus, as opposed to potentially thousands of electrons based on the plum pudding model. However, this so-called nuclear model of the atom wasn't without its own faults. This main problem was brought to attention by a Danish postgrad student who had received an invitation from Rutherford to study under his guidance by the name of Niels Bohr. Bohr's time with Rutherford came about due to a difference in opinion with his first mentor, J.J. Thompson. He had received his doctorate from Copenhagen University in 1911 with a thesis in electron theory in metals and had traveled to Cambridge to propose his electron ideas to Thompson, who at the time was the most distinguished mind in electron theory. Thompson showed some interest in Bohr's ideas, giving Bohr a few experiments to conduct. However, these experiments didn't go far and Bohr mostly came up empty-handed. While working under Thompson, Bohr got a chance to hear Rutherford speak, and upon hearing a lecture, he was instantly won over. He showed interest in Rutherford's work, and Rutherford invited Bohr to work under him at Manchester, which Bohr enthusiastically accepted in 1912. Although Rutherford was mainly an experimental physicist, and Bohr was more on the theoretical side of things, the two got along well and developed a massive respect for one another. While studying under Rutherford, Bohr came to notice a problem with the nuclear model regarding the orbits of the electrons. According to classical electromagnetism, a charged particle undergoing acceleration has to radiate to conserve its momentum. In the nuclear model, a radiating electron would lose its energy over time, and the effect of this would be that the electron slowly would fall towards the nucleus, eventually colliding with the nucleus and collapsing the atom. Since atoms in this universe are stable, this obviously couldn't be how electrons actually behave. Coincidentally, at around the same time, new revelations were being made in other areas of physics, with innovators like Max Planck and Albert Einstein introducing a new branch of science, quantum mechanics, in which they were proposing energy as being absorbed and emitted in discrete packets. Bohr took these advancements and then applied them to Rutherford's model of the atom, theorizing an entirely new way in which electrons orbit the nucleus. Bohr proposed that electrons orbit the nucleus at quantized energy levels. In these energy levels, electrons orbit without radiating energy until a certain threshold is met, and when it is, the electron instantly switches energy levels, releasing excess energy in the form of a photon. Similarly, an electron can move up an energy level when it absorbs enough energy to do so. This model proposed by Bohr did two major things. For one, it solved Rutherford's problem of electrons falling into the nucleus by proposing a ground state of n equals 1 in which an electron is in equilibrium in its orbit due to the attractive forces between the nucleus and the electron perfectly balancing with a linear force attributed to the direction of motion of the electron's orbit. In this ground state, an electron is not able to emit any more energy and collapse into the nucleus. The other major thing Bohr's proposed model did was incorporate the newly formed laws of quantum mechanics into the structure of the atom through applying quantized energy absorption and emission to the electron's orbit and getting rid of continuous motion between energy levels. Bohr spent a mere four months with Rutherford in Manchester and by the time of his departure, he had revolutionized the theoretical structure of the atom. He returned to Copenhagen for his wedding to Marguerite Norland, whom he had met two years earlier. 
After the honeymoon, he became an assistant professor in Copenhagen and was promoted to professor of theoretical physics in 1916, after he took an extended leave to be in Manchester with Rutherford, further refining his theory on the structure of the atom. Bohr's model was slowly accepted over time as experiments verified predictions that came from this model, most notably the Frank Hertz experiment. The Bohr model wasn't perfect, however, because for atoms with more than one electron, predictions of spectral lines became less and less accurate. Despite this drawback, the pros of the model vastly outweighed the cons, and the revolutionary quantum idea was definitely the most accurate theoretical structure of the atom to date, and was more than enough to propel Bohr into high status. In 1922, only 10 years into his scientific career, he received the Nobel Prize in Physics for his services in the investigation of the structure of atoms and of the radiation emanating from them. In his acceptance speech, he attributed his success to many greats in the field, including Rutherford, who helped kickstart his career, and Planck and Einstein for their contributions to the foundations of quantum theory. Although not perfect, Bohr's new model was a huge step towards a true understanding of atomic structure, and his work also merged newly budding quantum theory with his field of study, helping scientists move towards a more complete understanding of the nature of our universe. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Click here if you want to see more scientific progress made during this time period. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.